Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents The Past with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by Dave Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I have been working on this project since earlier this year. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now, the past with our guest, Christina Parrish. Hi. Hi, welcome. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you for hosting me. This is our first time being mobile. (laughs) (laughs) I figured out how to plug everything in. Hopefully this is recording. It's... Just all working out nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a lot, like a very good setup for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Well, I like to break the ice by asking you to pick one word to describe your past. Mm. Odd. <laughs> odd. Yeah, maybe odd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a math nerd. Sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't graduate high school, so I know nothing about math. But no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I'd say, I'd say odd. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where? Well, and we will come back to that. I guarantee you. Uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in uh, in all around Dallas. You know, if someone lives in Dallas, they never live mm-hmm. in Dallas. But uh, yeah, like Mesquite, Garland. Uh, Rowlett. Uh, okay. So Rockwell. do you know Burleson then? Burleson? Uh. It's not Dallas, it's Fort Worth. Oh, the no. The other side. No, no, I don't know the other side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've been all the way out to Kaufman. Okay. Uh, which is a little bit far out, or Voice City or something. But no, not, not Burleson. Okay. It's the first time hearing about this. Wow, wow. <laughs> that place <laughs> It's Restaurant destroyed. Mile, if you ever want to head up I-35, take the West Wing. It's Restaurant Central over Ooh, there. Oh, yeah. Different than, uh, what is it? Is it Greenville? Yeah. Not, oh, I'm thinking the wrong thing. Um, well, there's in a Arlington. Lot, are, uh, Addison? Or in Addison, they have like... Like just all these packed rest, just buffalo wild wings, chilies, <laughs> Applebee's, uh-huh. you know, all of Guardian, all, and, all the fine, yeah, fine yeah. dining establishments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you remember watching or observing a lot of comedy when you were growing up? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't watch um a lot of live comedy in Dallas. I. My mom would always watch, um, like specials uh-huh. sometimes. So I got a weird taste of like comedy that I do not relate to now, nor do I like, mm-hmm. um, think is all that great is my sense of humor. Um, so not, not that my sense of humor is great, but you know what I mean? Not, not my sense of humor. Sure. So she would watch, um, you know, Cat Williams, uh, Margaret Chow, uh, Right, Margaret Cho. Cho, yeah, Margaret Cho. Uh, that shouldn't. <laughs> um, and uh, the the redneck guys, whatever the you know, you're guys. a redneck. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. Fo- Foxworthy. Yes, Jeff or Foxworthy. Fucksworthy? Not really. No, not Foxworthy. No. <laughs> uh, then they have this thing called the uh, something like the blues or whatever. It would be like all of them. Larry the Cable Guy. Oh. Um, um, you know what Shoot, I, mean? I do know what you mean. It's yeah. like a redneck uh, touring thing that they exactly. they were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which plays well in that Dallas Fort Worth area, right? Well, I mean, I it, I never saw them live or yeah. anything. Um, I just lived there. Uh, but yeah, that. Um, uh, what else? I think those were those were the main. Oh, when Wanda Sykes. Uh, okay. Watch those were like the main like sort of comedy specials I remember, but I was never really interested in pursuing stand up or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, not until like I moved here to Austin when I was fifteen, and I started like I went to like do see improv with my dad when it because my dad lived here. Okay, and I would go visit like go to the hideout and watch the Maestro on Saturdays when I was like thirteen, and okay. I've been, Watching that, and that's when I started getting a little bit interested, but nothing in Dallas per se. Got it. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So you've, you've almost pre-answered a question that I have in, in that, how did you get to Austin? Oh yeah, I am. Um, I I'm. I just moved here to live with my dad. Okay. Um, and my mom's staying back in Dallas. And you, you were already checking out stuff before you officially moved. Yeah, the reason I moved is because I really wanted to do um improv. I was okay. like, oh, I really want to go and uh do that, you know, because every time I'd go to the hideout, the Maestro, I would always like raise my hand to be a volunteer. And I just had so much fun doing that. And my dad was like, maybe you could take classes if you lived here or whatever. And so that's how I like slowly got my mind transitioning. And then I moved here. And yeah. All right. So you were watching these specials back home. They were more of the stand up and specials. Mm -hmm. But you said you wanted to come here because of improv. So yeah. how did you, what, what, how did you learn about improv? Um, my dad one night just taking you yeah my, one night my dad just was like let's check this thing out and it was very random and uh it was at the hideout we went and then every time i would visit we would go see a show so then it just became like a routine mm -hmm. to go um and i was still not really interested in stand-up yeah um at all you know too too nerve wracking i was too nervous and stuff um yeah so when did you officially start on this improv track? If you were just all raising your hand during the shows? Oh, oh were... yeah. Um, sorry, sometimes I forget questions. Um, <laughs> That's okay. No, uh, uh, moved here, 15. I took classes at the hideout. I, my dad signed okay. me up for some classes, so I ended up taking classes there. And I would bus from Round Rock to or the Tech Ridge Center down to downtown and then I would bus back and um sometimes and I would have to and I would bike home and then I started doing that and then I got into uh just my dad was like you should try some stand you should try stand up so I tried stand up um when I was 16 and uh sorry those were all the dogs <laughs> let's up dogs. Them, doggies and hello, hello. Uh, okay, guys, go get butchered. Um, no. <laughs> Here, um, but, um, Twig, come on. This is my old dog. She's, she's so, okay, then rest. Yeah, yeah just dra drag her body out. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> it's okay. She's gonna die soon. She's super oh. old. Oh, I'm just oh. messing with you. Okay, um, so, uh, as anyways, back to what I was saying, bussing back and forth, 15, I was taking improv classes at the hideout. Then I started stand up when I was like 16 by taking a class and it's so embarrassing to me. Um, and I, and, uh, I took a class at Cap City. They used to do this thing with Sam Cox or whatever. I took a class. I did FPA. That was the first time I had like been on stage and mm -hmm. I was like, 16 and man uh it was terrible it was awful like very nerve-wracking and then i just stopped doing it because that was like huh. i was like so afraid but you know when i first started i was like i have all these things that are so funny i'm 16 mm -hmm. but they were not funny and um <sighs> and then i when i was like 17 i started doing it again and um through that, those years, I, I transitioned from being, doing improv at the hideout to the new movement, the institution, and then, the, you know, the improv scene, there's, it's a, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in that, you find a lot of stand up com comedian, comedians. Um, <laughs> and so then I got, you know, I just looked up to a lot of people, like Chris, I thought he was really, really funny. And, uh, Kath Barbadoro and, um, you know, and Mac Blake. I mean, Mac Blake was so funny. And so then I was just like, sort of eased my way in by doing like open mics. Mm -hmm. and I hosted this show called Block Party at TNM for a little while with Rob Gagnon, who also okay. is a stand up. It was really funny. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and, and that's it. Okay. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> that's kidding. a wrap. No, let's see how <laughs> no, much no, time no. we're going to make you suffer. No, not enough time. There's so many more questions, Christina. 
Okay, so you you've been taking the classes. You you gave up for not even a year because you were so horrified by the stand up experience. You you're, you get back into and you go through the improv route, and you feel comfortable yeah. with with improv scene. Yeah. Then you tried your hand at you've you came back to stand up. Yeah. And would you say you had? during any of this time, an aha moment where you're like, because you've got a really different path than anyone I've talked to before where you, you didn't finish high school. This is, I mean, the, the image that I'm forming in my head is you left high school to pursue this. Yeah. And so at a very early age, you have to decide I'm committing to this. Mm -hmm. And at what point did you say, yeah, this really is where I want to be. Um, that was when I was 16, uh, so I was in so- ending, I think it was sophomore year, I was turning, about to turn 17, mm-hmm. or something like that, and, um, you know, I just, honestly, at the beginning, I just had so much fun performing, that was, that was the main thing, I just had a lot of fun performing, and, uh, attempting to be funny, you know what I mean, I don't, I don't know, but I, I had a lot of fun fun making people laugh and that's I've been like that for a long time and it it was very odd because I wasn't as a kid like very funny I was more quiet into myself and then kind of do finding this sort of freedom within comedy yeah made me realize oh this is what I want to do and so then I dropped out after sophomore year and just decided to do that and yeah, and so uh, a lot of a lot of biking, a lot of busing. Got real <laughs> familiar with the buses. Um, yeah. Were you anxious about making that decision to jump in full full fledged? Honestly, no. And I think and people and I think that um, you know, people are like older people or whatever. And they're like, I can't believe you did that. You mm-hmm. know. Wow, what, it's not, it's not about like the, it wasn't courage, it wasn't, I don't think it was courage, I don't think it was bravery, it was just being like 16, what if 17, and just being very like, okay, I'll do this now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it, it wasn't fully thought out, it wasn't like, there was no plan, you know, and it, it wasn't scary to me, it was just like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, is, you know, I mean, I, I didn't, I, I didn't think it was, I mean, my dad videotaped me, dr- literally walking into the office and going up to the council asking me, like, can I talk to a counselor or whatever? And then I sat down, my dad's videotaping me on his phone, I was like, can I, I don't want to be here anymore. And they're like, are you sure? And they're like, and they, you know, tried to talk me out of it, of course. And then I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to go. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was very odd. It was very, like, my, like, my own father, was like super happy. Like we went out to dinner and he let me sip on wow. his, like some of his beer. Like it was weird. <laughs> like very odd, like not very normal. Well, it's um, interesting listening to you tell the story because I'm a parent. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, you've gotten amazing support in this decision, which as a parent, I know that that time, that period of time and aging is like, you you don't really have it settled in your or mind where you're, where you want to go, what you want to do. And your parents were supportive. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was really, it was really, it was awesome. You know, like, my, of course, you know, through the stump, like, I think that they were excited and then they got nervous. Sure. Through like after a year went by because, you know, I have, I have a stepbrother who's my age and he was still in high school. And so, I think that they became, like, really nervous. My grandmother still is talking to me about getting my GED. Like, you know, she still wanted me to go to college and be a basketball player, of all people. Like, I was on the C team, okay? (laughs) So, you know, and so there was, I mean, I definitely didn't, I didn't, it was support at first because it was like uh, when you're in that fantasy and that bliss, Mm -hmm. you know, and then that sort of fades away and reality comes back. Sure. And so, of course, my mom... My dad got a little nervous. My, but my dad was always more um, uh, uh, be, be, believed in it uh-huh. uh, through his 
you know, he never, he never pressured me at all. I mean, he was like homeless for a really long time and he has his master's degree and all that stuff. You know, you would think like somebody who's done all that through UT, whatever would be like, Oh, my child has to do the same thing. But no, he was, he was really, really great. Uh, well, kudos okay. to your dad. Yeah, yeah. Cool cool guy. Cool guy <laughs> magazine. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, how how have you settled on the type of comedy that you you do? And either in the type of improv that you do or, or stand-up. And we haven't even brought up the fact that you do uh, web shows or web shows. I'm I'm seventy years old. <laughs> Web, <laughs> shows. Web shows, <laughs> YouTube videos. Is that what the young kids are calling them right, these days? Yeah. <laughs> Skits. Um, uh, what was the question again? How, how have you settled? Oh but, uh, yes, yes, between yes. the improv and the stand up and, and the show show tunes, the videos, the type of comedy that you do. Um, I think I think for. Um, and man, man, do I wish that I was more like, uh, uh, had, had, was more, um, uh, could, I wish that I could have a, a better selling point, you know, because mm. I'm, I, I, I look up to, I wish that I had like, you know, really easy club jokes and, mm. uh, like easy humor to get used to. You know what I mean? I w- I really do because it seems like everybody who has that does well. And it makes sense, mm. you know, because it's, or, you know, it's more mainstream, more like more people could, uh, relate to it. But what I've realized is that I'm just not that person. You know, I had a really, uh, weird, interesting life and that gave me a lot of perspective and I just look at things a little bit differently. And so I think I'm just a, 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 a weird alternative, I guess, voice. I mean, mm-hmm. it feels weird even saying that, like even giving myself like a brand that fe- yeah. feels like a little more, e- a little egotistical, but, um, you know, I, I, I just, I, I think that I just, uh, I'm more attached to the odd, uh, the weird, the like extreme, um, more brainy thing. Like my, some of my like favorite thing, comedy things to watch is like Derek Andre's show, Comedy Bang Bang, uh, oh, yes. Maria Bamford, uh, Brent Weinbach, you know, like just kind of like little weirdos, mm-hmm. you know, um, and and it, I feel like for people like that, sometimes it just takes a long time, you know, to for anybody to appreciate it or or um, even accept it, you know. Mm-hmm. <sighs> You're doing great. Just get all bummed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> How did you get into doing YouTube videos? Um, I, uh... Or any videos. I don't know why I keep... <laughs> I'm I think, so old. No, I'm you 70. too. Um, I got into my skits. Uh, <laughs> I, like, I I wrote, like, some sketches and stuff, like... But every time I would write, like, s- stage sketches, they were so odd and required visual aspects, you know, or, like, you know, very technical... And so, um, I just had a friend, David Howe, who's great, and I, I, I wrote a thing, and he filmed it, and it was weird, and it, what, it's called Kill Him With Kindness, and it was really weird, uh, and I got some good feedback from it, in terms of that people just kept saying that's fucking odd, um, and I kind of liked that, you know, like, and so then I was just like, well, I guess I'll just keep going with this because this feels easier uh it almost feel felt easier than writing stand-up you know because mm. then i could get into like a story or something like that i mean honestly i guess maybe it's the, i don't know it to, to me it felt easier it felt uh better you it's know it's a complete picture when you it, yeah. and something that uh for anyone listening who hasn't picked up on it because it's not evident from what how you've described the process is you're writing these you're and, oh yes and, yes and performing in them it's not just 
you know, you yucking it up, doing something that at somebody else's word. It's your writing. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And which is awesome because then, like, I just like, I mean, we just shot, I just shot, like, a thing last uh, sun, Saturday, that involved me being born and covered in blood, and I was covered in blood the whole time, and I was trying to make sort of like a weird parody on uh, 16 and Pregnant. Um, it was, I was like covered in blood, like KY jelly, <laughs> food coloring, and we, Zach Brooks was in it, he was the teen dad, he ate a placenta. Oh my god. Like, uh, there was, like, a pie in the placenta, and he ate it. It was disturbing. And then I was watching footage the other day, and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> like, it's uh, it just, what what was I thinking, you know? So this is going to be a future Adult Swim late night. Right. Oh, oh man, if I could get on Adult Swim, <laughs> I would die happy. Holy shit. Um, do, you, do you have a biggest fear? In this in, in experience that you've been oh, having, oh yeah, of course, I of course. I mean, there's so many, there's so many fears. You just, I think, any co- comedian, they just push those Is things that just away. Just the comics or way, just drink them away. Oh. I I know where you guys are. Um, <laughs> I know what bar you guys sleep at. Uh, no, I. Oh, there's tons of fears. There's fears of like never being anything, and you wasted your whole hmm. life. Like especially for me, I. Like, everybody who I know is in college, and they're getting their doctor thing or whatever people do in college. I mean, there's a lot of people who are also pregnant, but, <laughs> um, you know, and I, I see that. For me, it's like, oh, God, how terrifying. Like, I don't have a GED. I only have 10th grade knowledge. Not even that. I mean, I cheated the whole, like, those first two years of high school, which were the only two years of high school uh, I experienced. I have this huge fear of, like, just being, never being anything, and I'm stuck at a dead-end job, and then I just die with, like, my cats eating my body. You know, like, it's 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 really scary, you know, to think that all this effort that you've put into something you love mm-hmm. will may not be accepted by people, but you want them to love it. It's just like, you know, I just, you're like begging, like, please watch. And they're yeah. like, no, I'm not interested. I mean, it's, it's terrifying. Like, even like, you know, if I show a video and it doesn't get laughs, I'm like, oh, man. Oh, man. It's too weird. Nobody likes this. You know, or if I perform and do stand-up, you know, and it doesn't go well, I'm like, oh, my God. Why can't I just have a different brain? I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, there's so many fears. I just don't think about them. I'm sorry I brought them up. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, it's definitely good to be aware of those sure. fears and try to work on it so they're not as scary as uh, you feel like they are. But, um, I mean, oh, my God, there's, oh, my God, there's so many fears if you're trying to pursue anything in the performing artistic mm-hmm. arena, you know. I think acceptance is, like, a huge one, you know. Yeah. Well, with that, I'm I'm going to say that I don't think you have anything to worry about because we're gonna. I think we'll spend the the next episode talking about a lot of the those web shows. That, <laughs> those those web shows those kids be putting up, <laughs> and and how amazingly talented you are oh. in those. Let alone the stand up, and I haven't seen you do improv, so I can't speak. But I'm guessing two out of three <laughs> means they're, they're great in all of them. No, no nice all right well that is a wrap on comedy wham presents the past with our guest christina parish christina tell us where we can find you on social media or otherwise you can follow me on twitter at i b super i b e super um or you can just straight up email me i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah twitter is the best <laughs> awesome listen to part two for more information about what Christina is up to today. You've been listening to Comedy Wham Presents, the past hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. And be sure to visit ComedyWham.com and give us a follow on Twitter at Comedy Wham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny.